Hi everyone, this is Ray Luskin of The Winnie Adventure. And today we are doing a, an interview with a woman who dares. Her name is Brenda Myers Powell. And I've known her for a number of years. We've met over the, in the course of our work together in the community. But let me tell you a little bit about her. She is the co-founder and executive director of Dream Capture Foundation. She was appointed to the United States Advisory Council on Human Trafficking, and she just uh, launched her memoir called Leaving Breezy Street. And I'm so excited to have Brenda here to tell you a little bit about her story. Hi, Brenda. Hi, how are you doing, Ray? I'm doing great. <laughs> now that we got our computer glitches and <laughs> taken care of. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Stuff happens, everybody. You know, it took us 15 minutes to get on the computer to work. So it does happen. So, but we're so happy. I'm so happy Brenda's here. So Brenda, why don't you tell people a little bit about your background and why you do what you do? Well, I, I come from the west side of Chicago. Um, I grew up, um, my mother died at, at, when I was six months old. It's, uh, it, and all of this is, is, is in the book and, and, and you get to read about it uh, in detail in Leaving Breezy Street. And I was put into the care of my grandmother. Um, and I came up uh, um, uh, a little black girl on the on, on the west side, and I went through a lot of stuff as I was coming up, molestation, being adultified, uh, uh, having to grow up very fast, and uh, molested very young, um, not knowing, uh, uh, not having an identity uh, of knowing who I was, very confused uh, because of all the things that was going on, and. Um, uh, at, at an early age, I uh, was kidnapped and uh, by uh, two pimps, and and my life uh, took a, a harsh turn, and a whole lot of things happened. I had two daughters. Um, uh, by the time I was uh, uh, fifteen years old, I life. Life was very fast, and 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 came very hard for me. Um, and then it, 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 it ran like a roller coaster ride, you know, things were like, boom, 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 one, one behind another, one, uh, um, just one trauma behind, uh, another and, and they piled up on me very fast. So that's, that's how my life was. And, um, Ray, I don't, I don't think that, that it ever slowed down. Mm -hmm. And, so and, 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 my, I am uh, 64 years now, 64 years old, and, and and my life hasn't slowed down because, as as you know, uh, when I did gain gain control of my life at um, somewhat at 39, when I got out of uh, uh, human trafficking and 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 started to gain some control of my life, it took off. I, I took off. I took off full speed then right. to help other girls and women. I mean, I love you, you. There's a documentary about your life that is very powerful where you are on the street talking to these girls, you know, and giving mm -hmm. them hope and direction and ideas that you don't have to live this life forever. And I exactly. always found that, you know, incredible. But how did you get from on the street to being this inspiration for other young women and, and an activist? I mean, there's so, um, this could be a couple hour conversation. I realized that. So <laughs> that's why yeah, we have to read your book. a lot in there. But, I, 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 I found a, a organization that uh, helped women um, get out of the uh, lifestyle of prostitution. It was a place called Genesis House, um, founded by a woman named Edwina Gately, who was is, is still my mentor and like a mother to me. Um, without her, I, w I don't know where I would be. And in the years that, um, and, and, and all these years, which I've been clean for 25 years, I have... I have, she's been my mentor. I don't know where I would have, my life would have been in direction or done with, had I not met her and she inspired me to be more. She inspired me to uh, look at women and um, uplift women and be proud of myself as a woman. Cause I never knew that women were so powerful and so beautiful and just who the beings that they are because I was always raised to feel like women were under the rule of thumb of men and that we would always be that way, that we would be uh, under the rule of thumb of men. 
I mean, that's the way I was raised and I was taught that way. I, I, sh I, I saw that in my community, women being under the rule of thumb of men, being beat by men, being crushed by men, being used by men. And I thought that's what the role of women was. So yeah, I, I, Mina, I, I just want to stop you for one second, just because I think this is also a broader conversation for women in general that we are under the rule of men, you know, that that was sort of how we were all raised, whether you had trauma in your life or not, that exactly. was sort of the, the messaging around us, you know, the fathers ruled the household, the men, you know, listen to the men, you know, you, you do what they want and they're, you know, and we, we're just supposed to be seen and not heard. And, exactly. I think, and I think that's a conversation that's important to have, no matter what your, what your path in life, because I it, think it's it universal. It should be had, because um, my book um, has a lot of, uh, of pieces about that, because people think that in order to read my book, you've got to be a survivor of human trafficking, or you should want to know about human trafficking. That's not so. Um, you should want to know about a, 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 a woman who struggled to become independent and to be on her own. That's what I, my struggles were. They were no different than a woman who lives in a, in, a, in a half a million dollar home with a Mercedes and has a, a credit card and a budget, but her husband comes home and, and, and beats her up. Right. And she has to put the makeup on in order to cover the scars but right. or, and there are other forms of abuse. It's the, the verbal abuse, the constant exactly. putting down. There are the so many or, pieces Or the woman with the six-figure job who gets sexually harassed on her job uh, 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 be, and, and will never make partner, but she stays at that job. Why does she stay at that job? You know, we're, women, period, are, are, are always struggling to make themselves uh, equal or better or, or have to fight harder to get a position in life as, as men, but why do they have to do that? Right. And why do they have to get, um, you know, why, why do they have to, you know, uh, show up and, 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 and not get recognized or, you know, go through what they go through in order to be recognized? Why is that still happening? Right. You know, and why are, 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 are we, um, um, are, are we, um, I'm trying to find the word because I just lost my thought, my, you know, you know, I'm a little bit old, okay? Hey, you're young compared <laughs> why to me, Brenda. Why are we objectified? Why are we objectified all the time just because we're women? You know, it, 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 it shouldn't be happening in today in this society when we know that we're, we're as equal, equally brilliant and smart as men are. And we have contributed to the society as much as men. And we have shown that, but yet we get treated in a second citizen type way. And we get abused, we get violence toward us, we get raped and not believed. We get all of these things happening to us and we have to fight harder to be recognized. It should not be happening. We should be recognized as we are beautiful, respected and boundary set. And we should not have to have these things happening to us. I totally agree. Thank you. I think that's a valuable conversation we just had. So I didn't need to interrupt you in your story of, of you know. Of oh, it's okay. Okay, but I, 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 you know, I haven't had this conversation really in, with other people, so I'm excited that people are going to get to hear that that this is universal and this is about women who dare. We dare mm -hmm. to be equal. We dare to be, you know, who we are meant to be to step into our brilliance, power, and purpose. That's what it's all about. Yeah. So that's that's you know, um, of years of trauma, it's not easy to say. I'm worth it. I'm right. enough. I am who I am, even with the bumps and the bruises I've been through. I have been stepped on all my life, but here I am stepping up. And I have to relay that to women who have been molested, raped, abused, beat down, and tormented most of their lives and say, you are greatness. Oh, I agree. I, I did a, 
a piece, you know, years ago, I did a painting, which I, I have actually donated to Northwest Casa this year, that was a head. And it was like all the words you say, I'm broken, I'm worthless, I'm no good, who want me, you know, after the, being traumatized, you know, I was sexually mm -hmm. abused by my grandfather. So I get that, you know, and it's like, it was traumatic. It had long, you know, long uh, percussions, lifelong percussions at times, you know, it's like, I still struggle with the safe world. You know, that's one of those paradigms that I'm always like working at and, and trying mm -hmm. to think about. And I, you know, I didn't, I couldn't say I am enough. I am worthwhile. I'm loving until I was in my late thirties as well. So I get that, you know, yeah, it, 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 just, it took a long time of healing, you know, and, and personal work between I did 12 years of traditional therapy, but then I went into alternative other modalities because mm -hmm. it wasn't enough for me. I needed to find other ways to heal, whether it was working with affirmations, coaches, you know, other people, uh, you know, different body work, you know, things like that, all the pieces that go into life of us as a beautiful human being and, and saying, okay. And, and all the time, at least for me, knowing that I had a purpose, I didn't want this to happen to anybody else. I wanted to have my voice known, you know, and stepping out of that comfort zone. Cause it was, a you know, I don't really want to tell anybody. I didn't tell anybody until I was in my you know thirties, you know, I, I went public finally and told my story, but it was terrifying to tell my mm -hmm. story, you know? So um, you know, just for you to be able to have a movie made about your life, to talk about it. I know that has impacted so many people. And, you know, I, I remember, I think the first time I met you, there was, it was at um, Looking Glass Theater. There was a production about something and you were one of the, the people who sat in the hallway to talk to people if they were touched and troubled by what they had seen. So I, mm -hmm. that was the first time I met you, you know, and I was like, okay, mm -hmm. I get this girl, you know, so thank you for the work you do. Thank you. You know, it's not easy to be um, a part of the subject that you're talking about. You're 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 mostly pa you're passionate about it, and um, people want to redirect what you're saying because they're saying, "Oh, you're still, you know, you're you're still going through it. You're still broken." But it's no more. It, it doesn't make me less of a of an expert or a professional. Right. You know what I mean? I'm not, and I'm not broken anymore. Right. I'm not right. broken just because I'm passionate about it. I'm not broken about this anymore, but I'm still real passionate about it because I went through. Right. You and know? you're passionate about the advocacy piece because I know you've been instrumental in getting different laws passed and exactly. working in Illinois. And I'd love for you to tell people, I mean, Illinois has been pretty progressive in this field. Believe it or yes, not. Illinois yeah. is very progressive in passing the laws and getting a lot of things, but Illinois is running very short on services. Mm -hmm. They need to implement the services and put the money behind, like they need to put the money where their mouth is, right. you know what I'm saying? And they need to submit, put the services where their laws is. They need to start implementing and putting money behind the services. Illinois is behind in that area. Right. Because well, I think part of it is, you know, we've, we've, as a state, we've been almost bankrupt at time, you know, for social and services. They, and so everybody cuts cut social services first. And therefore, <laughs> then it's like, then you have to rebuild, you know, um, did you go to the Mayor Daly's conference he had years ago? There was like a four or five day conference on coming from the perspective of um, somebody who would, was in the system, you know, who had, you know, it was a domestic abuse of, you know, victim, survivor, and looking at it that way. And at that point, you know, he, and of course, then he was gone, but it was like, it was a good start because we were looking at what kind of services do we need? We need to put them all together in one building. You know, so you have child protection, you have advocates there for you, you know, court people appointed for you, as well as all the, all the pieces, even the babysitting. So when you go to court to ask for, you know, uh, you know, something for, you know, get the guy away from me. I can't think of the term right now. I'm talking too fast. Uh, <laughs> you know, um, those kind of things. And it was like, wow, that would be phenomenal. Let's use our- It would be if they had went uh, followed through with that on a yeah. lot of areas and build upon it because now we're in, a er we're, we're in a world where things are popping up tenfold. Yeah. And ideally, ideally, ideally things like that that should have been a thought process and followed through were not. Right. And now our problems are tenfold. Right, they magnify because we can't handle it. 
But I would like to go back to a little bit about the laws and some of the things we've done a lot of trainings. You know, there's court, there's court watch, there's trainings for police. Um, I, I love the fact that they changed the law and said, I think it's 19. If you're under 19, you can't be prosecuted. And no, it's under 18. 18, okay. Yeah. Under 18, it's the No Child Act. Yeah. And um, the Dreamcatcher Foundation was you were instrumental. instrumental in that with other agencies. Uh, and we were, um, because how can you consent when you're a minor? Right. You don't, you don't to, know. Um, in, to sex, to anything that's going on in your life, you can't consent to it. And we still have not, completely um, did that uh, law, it's, it's just due because if a guy is caught with a minor in his car uh, in, 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 in the act of prostitution, he, not, he should not be charged with just um, soliciting for prostitution. He should be uh, charged with having sex with a minor. He should be charged with, you know, uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, statutory rape, because it is a minor. So there should be more charges put upon this person, which is another deterrent from them coming out and buying sex from children. Right. You know what I mean? Because I was a child, uh, a prodigy of, 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 of human trafficking. And I can, I can tell you, they know that we're children. It's not that they don't know. They mm -hmm. really do know that we're children. That's what they come out there looking for. And they find us. They know that we're children. It's not that they we get in the car and they don't know. They actually know and are turned on because we're children. Right. So they know what they're looking for and they're doing. So they should be charged with that. And um, these type of things should be looked at more seriously and the charges should be given to these guys. So how do you think we can get more uh, support for these, you know, and, and advocate in a different way? I mean, are there any coalitions that you would suggest people join or things that they can do, uh, you know, as an everyday person who cares? I know when you were, um, I think you were speaking at, uh, we're half the sky at the Holocaust Museum. I think you were speaking at that. Yeah. Point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, um, you know, listening to those kinds of conversations, it's like, yeah, there were so many men in the audience who like, huh? They were like, what are you talking about? They were like clueless. And, you know, I, I, I applaud the fact that 20 years ago, men were never in the conversation. And then over the years, they, they are, but we still have so much work to do. And I don't, I don't have any suggestions and maybe you have some ideas of how we can, A, include them, get some, new, some more laws on the books, more services for people. I'd love to hear your ideas. The, we have a Chicago Alliance Against Sexual Exploitation case. It was an organization right. which educates and, and, and fights and puts out laws. We have Lifespan. There's, that's an organization that, um, you know, uh, helps change laws and fights for uh, um, young women um, in, in different ways. We have different organizations such as my organization, the Dreamcatcher Foundation. You might support us and what we do and how we fight human trafficking. Um, gravitate toward an organization that is really doing the work and support them in their efforts. We don't expect you to be out there on the front line, but we are. We are out there on the front line and support us. Support us monetarily. Um, um, support us with cash. Support us in our efforts. Support us by going down there, um, uh, by calling when we have um, when we're supporting a bill, um, look on our websites and see what we're supporting and then pick up your phone and support it. I mean, uh, and support these um, different laws that we're lobbying for. Support it with us. We need your support. We can't do it alone. And it, it's, it's not a thing, it's life and death, you know. They are um, trying to pass laws to, um, that, 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 that will say it is uh, uh, to, uh, uh, decriminalize uh, uh, prostitution, which will help, uh, will, will make it, you know, open up brothels and different stuff like that and different 
states across the country and Illinois is one. And we can't allow that because if that happens, we know who will be affected by it, mostly marginalized communities and, 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 and economically challenged poor black and brown girls will be um, affected by this. And, you know, and they're calling human trafficking and, 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 and prostitution sex work, making it sound like uh, you it's know, a choice you word, made to go out there and get the, the money. Yes, yeah. the word sex work making it sound really uh, uh, more legal and, and smoother. And let me tell you, there's nothing legal and smoother about prostitution and human trafficking. It's, it's, it, it's, it's, it's slavery. I mean, anytime you sell another human being, it's slavery. It's not a sex work. You don't get a 401k. You don't get vacation time. You don't get benefits on a job. The type of work it is, you wouldn't ask your child or your mother or your aunt or your cousin to do. You know, it's, 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 it's terrible. It's not just sex. Women get harmed. They get murdered. They get uh, uh, raped. They get so many things happen to a woman. If I mean, if you were to put it in a job description, I mean, how would you describe it? You know what I'm saying? I'm on my knees all day, and 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 I'm between a man's legs, you know, um, uh, right be square between his balls and and his and and, <laughs> and his penis, uh, working all day. What kind of job description is that? And what would be the what would be a fair pay for that? And what would be um, a fair pay for me to uh, 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 be in Starbucks uh, grabbing me a coffee and a guy walk up behind me and say, well, when you're done with that uh, ma uh, 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 caramel macchiato, uh, uh, I'll be outside and uh, you can, uh, you know, give me a, 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 a bojo. You know, how would that affect a person's mental health to live in a climate in a world like that, where that kind of stuff was legal? And right. then if you weren't in the business and a guy, I walked up behind you and said, hey, did I just see you down the street at that brothel? When you get through with that, could you uh, come in there around here and uh, 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 take care of me? What kind of society would you like to live in if those things were happening in your community or for you? Because you think it won't touch you. But if we legalize stuff like that, wouldn't it make harder for normal women to? And you heard I'm saying, I'm saying stuff like that normal women like right. people who deal in that aren't normal women but you see what that language that has to be used in that that yeah. that's not fair that's not fair so we don't want that kind of society and world to to, to, to we want to create that kind of world to live in for our our dear our dear children to have to grow right. up in we want to reverse that community we want a, a community where our children grow up different than we did in a community yep. where young boys understand that it's not okay to objectify girls, that it's not okay. It's not a rite of passage to go to strip clubs and, and, and they don't have to deal in pornography because they're a man. It's we want a society where young men are growing up to think women as beautiful creatures, girls as wonderful women, equal to them, equal to them, and as, and the greatness that women and things that they can do equal to them. We want our children to write, to grow up different than we thought. There's no good girl and bad girl. They're just girls. I love that. Yep. Wow. That was a lot we just covered in a very short time. <laughs> uh, but it's, it's important conversation, you know? And yeah. why don't you just tell people how they, you know, we're not done yet, but while we're, we'll take a breath for a second, tell them how they can reach you and where, you know, and the name of your organization again and the website and all that kind of stuff. You can reach me at the Dreamcatcher Foundation at brenda.dreamcatcher at gmail.com, brenda.dreamcatcher at gmail.com. You can uh, definitely reach me there. Uh, um, <laughs> Uh, I have my, my book is out. Well, that's and, what I want to talk to you. Why, why now did you write this memoir? And, you know, I know I, I heard a little bit how wonderful it's going, but let's talk about your memoir. 
Well, my memoir dropped in June, uh, the, the, the third, 30th of June, and I'm very proud of it. Um, it's called Leaving Breezy Street, and it's got great reviews from the critics. I mean, they have, um, it won the um, audio award for the summer. Yay. Um, so it's it's getting great reviews. I just need you people to go on Amazon and order it, um, buy it, so <laughs> let it and 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 read it for yourself. And 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 uh, it's not it's not an easy read. It is gritty. It is direct to the point because I wrote it. You know I I you know you how I am. From, right? You speak from here. You don't. You I don't speak from words. there. And if you um and what I did was speak from the heart, from my heart to your heart, so you could know what was in my heart when I was on the street. So I can tell you how it felt because I got so aggravated with those happy hooker stories. Oh, it's just it was a wonderful thing. I right. think. pretty woman. You know, yeah, that, yeah, that model. Me, you know, and I could never, oh my Lord, you know, that's not the way it was. Yeah. That's just not the way it was. And I've talked many of me, many of many of sisters of mine that were on the street. We had discussions. And that's not the story I heard from them. And that's not the story that I have to say because it wasn't like that. You know, I was in a lot of pain while I was out there. My soul was crying. My spirit was crying. My heart was in pain. And I was looking for something that was not existing because I was looking outside of everything that was me. Mm -hmm. I couldn't, because what was inside of me was so, there was so much pain inside of me. I couldn't bear to look inside of me. So I looked outside of me for love. I looked outside of me for nurturing. I looked outside of me for an answer because what was happening in me couldn't be real. It was too horrible to be a real story. It was yeah. a nightmare. So I looked outside to find something to help what was going on, to, to, to definitely heal what was going on inside. And it wasn't there either. So finally one day, the God that kept me alive reached out and said, let me get my child. Mm. <laughs> and he wrapped his arms around me and started a healing process with me because it was a totally God. Only God could heal that much hurt. And he put me in front of the right people. You know how God says, I'm going to put you in front of this woman right. and this woman, and I'm going to introduce you to her and her. And it was, it was like magic. I began to see and heal. Right. You know? I, I, I think when we're open wow. and we let go and say, okay, I can't do this alone anymore, God, you know, that that's when the right people, opportunities and resources show up. That's you know? what they do. Yeah, they really do. I do. love I love to have a spiritual conversation. That that's part of my heart too. You know, it's me like, too. Yeah, it really is. Um, and I know that part of your work is going into schools. So, what part of the story do you share with the kids who are in school? You know, I guess because it's different. Because you were talking to high school girls and stuff for the most part, right? Hey, I share my little girl with them. Okay. I share my young girl with them. And it's because I know my little girl is their little girl and my young girl is their girl because I'm no different than them. I'm living right. their I'm living their story. I'm I, I'm I'm the little girl that they were. I'm the little girl that um uh, was the 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 uh the the thought in the neighborhood who the little boys were, you know, um who's had 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 access to I'm the little girl in high school who had the friendly I, I tell them who had the friendly coochie you know what I mean yeah, yeah. I, I had the friendly I, stuff because I didn't have self-esteem enough to say no to the little boys right I I wanted them to love me. And so I talk about that and I talk about why I felt like that inside. So they can look inside themselves and see what's going on with them and why they are doing it. Are they like me? Was I like Miss Brenda? Was I hurting inside? Was somebody touching me? Is somebody touching me? And how do I get help? Right. Am I that going through case. that? Yeah. Am I going through that? And how do I get help? Can I talk to her after she's done and tell her I've got a secret? And they do. 
I love it. And they yeah. do. And they walk up to me. You said, well, what happened to you has happened to me. Right. And, and I those are the stories. That's why I'm so glad you wrote your memoir. Because again, it will open eyes, you know, to it so will. many of these issues and the lifelong consequences to self-esteem, to confidence, to your spiritual growth. I mean, I was angry at God. I mean, there was no God in my life. I thought it was like, okay, yep. if I was there angry, go. God's going to smite me dead. Uh, uh -uh. Ray, I thought I was the little girl in the movie, The Bad Sea. No, I never thought. <laughs> I, I, I did, but you remember the movie, yeah. The Bad Sea? Yeah, I heard about it, never thought, but yeah. Okay, so I thought I was her because me, my grandmother used to make me watch that movie and she said, this is what happens when little girls are bad. Uh, okay. So I thought I was her. I was the bad seed. So God didn't like me. He was going to strike me down with lightning. Mm -hmm. And there, that was going to be my demise because I was a bad girl because of what people were doing to me, but not because I was a bad right, girl. Right. But you don't know that as a child. And I know my first lightning bolt came, you know, with that conversation, I had gone to, um, an Overeaters Anonymous meeting. And, you know, I was talking to, you know, there and I'd gone to some that were about, you know, abuse, but that didn't resonate. I just couldn't find my, but going to Overeaters Anonymous and there was a rabbi's wife there talking about God and feeling that she was so angry at God and she didn't die. And I'm like, really? Oh my God. And so I started my own work and I wrote a one amp for God. That was my internal work starting mm -hmm. there. I want a one amp for God. What does that God say to me or do? to help this child, you know, I was, I was a, a grown ass woman, but at the same time, I was this child who was terrified and scared and felt worthless. And so it opened up a whole conversation, you know, for me personally. And, you know, I started, that's, that's really when my healing process started, you know, some of those kind of things, you know, where like, you, as you said, you never know when you're going to hear that right person's going to come in front of you to say, oh yeah, that can happen, you know? So it's powerful. This work is powerful. It takes a strong woman to do the work. It takes courage. It takes, it takes resilience and it takes a long time too. <laughs> it's patience, you know, it's, it's being able to work through these issues because you're dealing with your own issues, your family issues, you know, your, the societal, you know, things and the stories that are out there. So I really applaud you. I've always admired you. And I really want to thank you for being here today. I mean, it's been a really powerful conversation. And I'd love for you to share if you have any final thoughts that you might want to share with people. I, well, I'm, first of all, thank you, Ray, for, for inviting me in. And my final thoughts are, thank you for inviting me and read the book. You know, um, this book, Somebody said, well, um, maybe the book will not do so well because, well, you know, people are not reading that much. Uh, you, it's not an American story. What world do you live in? It is an American story. <laughs> and I looked at them, I said, it is the American story because America made me. I didn't make me. Mm, that's America right. made me. I am the, the joke at the cocktail party. I am the embarrassment in the churches. I am the conversation at the family reunion that nobody wants to have. I am the little secret in all the families that nobody wants to talk about. I am the, the disgrace on all the corners of America that people want to just not see or lock up. I am the thing that guys do in the dark and they don't want their wives and their girlfriends to know about. I am everything that made America and America is about, but that America doesn't want to talk about. I am the American story. But you don't want to tell that story because you want to continue on with the story, no matter how deep the damage is. But no matter how much you try to hide it, I am the American story. You understand what I'm saying? I get it. I get it. But read my story. 
And you and can find it on reading, Amazon, everybody. While you're reading my story, close your eyes. And don't imagine me with brown skin. Imagine me colorless and read my story. Yeah. Don't put color in it. Right. Close it, your isn't, eyes. it isn't it is some color story. I'm not brown. I got my story too. You know, it's like there, but for the grace of God, go I, was I on the street? That was one of the poems I wrote when it was part of my healing process, because I could have been that person, you know? I, I There were so many opportunities to hurt myself and to do harm to myself, and, you know, and 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 we each have that. It's like that, that piece of us that we still don't want to talk about because it's painful, you know? Even though it doesn't, it's not me today, you know, but it brings up tears, you know, when I say it and I, you know, when I'm listening. It to does for me too. Yeah. But. I know how how my story is. Right. If you, and I, and I know if you read my story and you think of me not as a black girl, think of me as a white girl. Right, right. I get it. So thank you, Brenda. I appreciate it. And I always like- I love you, Ray. Thank you. I love you too. And I'm going to end with a quote today. Uh, because Brenda and the people that she mentioned, uh, her mentor and so many others, Never underestimate the ability of a small group of committed individuals to change the world by Margaret Mead, because that's what we do. You know, we've both been active for many, many years in this arena, and we still are, you know, unfortunately, it's, we still are needed. I wish there's gifts a day when they don't need us anymore, but they still do. So thank mm -hmm. you, Brenda, and I love this conversation. Thank you. Thank you.